Welcome back and you're already in chapter 2 and in this chapter we're going to go ahead and integrate React as our visual layer. Throughout this chapter we're going to go ahead and package up our client-side code, we'll expose a deploy folder, we'll transcribe our code from whatever version of code we have into ES5 with the help of Babel.js and we'll also render our first rendering with React DOM and even create our first React component. But for all that to happen, we need to start from the first lecture of this chapter, which is all about packing up our client-side code, which is also conventionally called as bundling. What we're gonna do is we're gonna discover Webpack, configure it, and also bundle. So let's go ahead and do that. Literally the concept is if you have multiple JavaScript files to bundle them all up into a singular file, so then you could serve that to your client. So let's see it in action. Alrighty, welcome back to a new chapter and it's time for us to continue. We're already at Hello World 3.1, how exciting. It's time for us to add JavaScript into our client side because really that's where the heart of our application is going to be. Now, to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to go back into our code and we're going to start building it out. And I'm going to start off by just creating my client JavaScript file. And to do that, I'm just going to go ahead here and just create a new file. And I'm going to call it client.js and just save that file. All right, so now that we have our client.js, let's start with really basics of the basics. Console.log, hello world, 3.2. And let's get that to actually output on our screen. Now, I don't want to actually have our client directly in our source files. For first, firstly, our file here is actually a private file. It is not exposed to the external world. Nor do I want it to be exposed because I'm going to be using a lot of libraries and I want to be able to type in ES6. I want to be able to type in the new age JavaScript in multiple files and not just have one file. The client file for me in this case is really just the root file where I'm going to load up all other files from. To be able to accommodate that, I'm going to be using a web packager. Now there's a few of them out there, but we're going to be using one that is called Webpack. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install it. But this time around when I install, what I want to do is I'm going to ask from npm install, just like before. But this time around, I'm going to ask to save it to the dev environment, and I'm going to save our web pack. Now, the reason why I'm saving it to the dev environment is because we're actually never going to be using it within our live application. We're only going to be using this when we're in development or in the exterior of the application, but the application itself will never actually need to approach it. So that's why we're never going to actually install Webpack into uh, save and on contrary when it's going to be saved it's going to be found in our package only instead of being a dependency it's going to be a dev dependency. Okay so with that said now that we have Webpack started up we want to also configure it and let me show you just the basics of configuring it and I'm going to go ahead here and create another file because the easiest way to configure Webpack is literally creating a webpack.config.js file. And we want it to sit in the root of our project. And inside of this file, we're going to go ahead and actually create our directions that we want to give to Webpack. Now, the directions that we want to give it are basically npm, uh, npm export object or node export object. So we're going to go to module, module dot exports and we're just going to export out an object now notice I'm not using here ES6 notice I'm not using anything beyond the basics because it's, although now we're working in a very uh, advanced version of node so we do have ES6 in it but you might be working in an earlier version or maybe you're going to be developing to a server that needs to be on an earlier version for some reason in any event I'm I'm going to go ahead and just use that. So first of all, we're going to have here an entry and that's going to be the entry point of our source file. And in this case, I'm going to start off our application setting our entry point to be that client. So I'm just going to go ahead here and say in the same directory that I'm in, I want to get the client.js and that is going to be our starting point, our entry point. Our next stage is we also want to set up and define an output. And for our output, I'm going to go ahead here and create an object because I want to set it in a specific path. 
I'm going to set it in the deploy folder. And if I'm already doing that, let me go ahead here and create a new folder and call it deploy. And what do we want to call the file? Well, let's go ahead and call the file. Let's call the file name. And by the way, I know a lot of times people complain that I don't, I'm not consistent. All right, so I'm going to double quotes for the name of consistency, but I often forget of that consistency. All right, so with that said, uh, what did we said? We'll call this index.js for file, although you know what? That might seem confusing. So how about we'll just call it client.js or app client. Now, I know in a real world application, you might call it something else, but I'm just going to call it. How about we'll call it app? All right, let's just call it app. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, last but not least, before we could really test this out, let's go ahead into our blank.ejs. And I'm going to go ahead here and write underneath my body. And by the way, uh, I'm doing it on purpose underneath the body because I don't want it to load. I don't want to put your preloaders. I don't want to listen to when everything is ready. Once we're here, we know everything is ready. So I'm just going to go ahead and call our script. That way we avoid the situation of needing to... Um, to basically have uh, too much fancy stuff going on. And I'm going to go ahead and just call it not index, but we called it app. Let's go ahead and save that. Now, last but not least, we need to go ahead and actually run Webpack to take this new file that we've created and change it into the name of uh, app.js. And that directive, we already gave it inside of here. So we took the client and we want to output it into the app.js. Now, to create the command, I'm going to go ahead here and use one of those starter commands so we have your in our script here so we don't need daemon because we're really doing that daemon when we're starting things up so i'm going to go ahead here and i'm going to create a new one and i'm just going to call this pack and all that pack is going to do is going to call the command webpack now note that i'm not putting here any extra parameters i'm not telling it what does it need to webpack and so on and so forth because all that was already pre-configured in our webpack configuration now if i go ahead into my source files if everything is saved and i go into my terminal and in my terminal itself i could call npm run pack and when i do that what should happen is we should then compile that file compress it down or bundle it up really per se and in our case we really created a really large file compared to our original file that just had one line in it but that is given in this situation we're not worried about uh, um, processing for production at this stage really we're processing it for our development environment at the moment so if we look into our de uh, deploy we'll see that we'll have here a lot of extra fuff and information and webpack and all these good stuff that are built for development itself that in production environment we probably wouldn't need it but with all this goodness that came in here we'll see that we also have our log file that is called here hello world 3.2 we're never going to change the file directly here we'll always change it in our um source file deploy will never touch in this lecture we were introduced to webpack and saw how to get it to work but there's much more we can do with webpack and we'll continue and explore it throughout this chapter